Hello everyone. Welcome to Del Monte and Science. I'm Lou Del Monte. This is part two addressing the question, is time travel possible? In part one, I gave you most of the theoretical background regarding time travel. In this part, I'm going to introduce some new information that hasn't been actually produced in any other media except on my own website, on my own blog, uh, on my YouTube channel, and you know, on my Facebook page. And of course here now it's going to be e expressed on YouTube. And that is uh, a new solution to Einstein's uh, equations of special relativity. Now, the equation I'm going to talk about is in my book, Unraveling the Universe's Mysteries, which is available at Barnes and Noble and uh, Amazon.com. So please feel free to avail yourself of a copy. Uh, don't worry about the mathematics. Uh, a lot of that is in the appendices. If you're really interested in how the derivation is done, it's in the appendices. But actually, in the body, in the copy of the uh, book, I talk about the existence equation. And that's a new equation, and actually I think it's the first time that it's been presented um, on YouTube, of course, and actually into the scientific community. So this is original research on my own, and I called it, in the book, I called it the existence equation. conjecture. Now, why did I add the word conjecture on it? And I'm not going to be using that throughout the uh, discussion, but why did I put the word conjecture? Because I've actually verified it uh, with some experimental data, but I really have given it uh, out to the scientific community to get their opinion on it. So, but I believe it's correct. What it's saying that a mass, any, any, any reality, and this is a mass, uh, is traveling in time. Now, when a mass travels in any of the three dimensions that we are typically familiar with, we say it has kinetic energy. Okay, and we have, a, we have formulas going 400 years back to Isaac Newton and to Einstein about 100 years back that we can express very exactly what the kinetic energy of the mass is as it travels in space. But I ask the question, what is the kinetic energy of a mass that is traveling in time? And that is the existence equation. So it's in the x4 direction. So the kinetic energy in the x4, and I used what's very commonly used as Minkowski space, in uh, Einstein's equation. Minkowski was a professor, and he actually had Einstein as a student. When Einstein uh, brought out his special theory of relativity in uh, roughly 1906, thereabouts, uh, Minkowski, he, uh, Einstein brought it out uh, using uh, algebra, and Minkowski did it geometrically. So it was a good addition to the special theory of relativity. But it says the kinetic energy in the fourth dimension, which is uh, in Minkowski space, is minus 0.3 mc squared. And there's a few odd things about this equation. First, it has a minus sign, which I interpret that uh, any mass requires energy to continue to move in time. And the amount of energy it's required is defined by this equation. I uh, actually was able to predict the lifetime of a muon from particle acceleration data within 2% using this equation. So there's a high probability that the equation is correct. So what does this tell us? It says, theoretically, if we can give a mass an energy equivalent to this, we can extend it one lifetime. If we can give it 10 times this amount of energy, we can extend it 10 lifetimes. That's essentially the same as, and that's time dilation, that's essentially the same as saying it's moving into the future. 
So I'm going to, I have a, an article on this posted on my website, louisdelmonte.com. Uh, I also have it on my Facebook, and I invite you to friend me. Become my friend on Facebook. I have an article there. I'm also going to publish this video in Facebook. So fundamentally, this is the new information. This, the existence equation, is one more equation that gives us insight into time travel. And I understand it may be hard, if not impossible, to believe that time travel is possible. So until next time, thank you.